2004. Read this one carefully, saints. The nation's Roman Catholic bishop voted Wednesday to join a new alliance that would be the broadest Christian group ever formed in the United States, linking American evangelicals and Catholics in an ecumenical organization for the first time. What does that mean? The image of the beast has been formed. It now needs the breath of life to be given by the two horned beast. Are you with me, brother and sister? Let's go. The protest is over. 2002, I say that because the Catholic Church is an incredible, important institution in our country, I'm also going to mention the fact that I appreciate the Pope's leadership. President George W. Bush, 20 May 2002, Bush went on to say that we must listen to the Pope's teachings. We must follow him. The protest is over. Are you with me, saying? Members of the Christian coalition, honest men, but deceived men, that are being herded into passing a national center law. The protest is over. Now here's the biggie. Here's the biggie. Pope Benedict speaks at United Nations. People listen as Pope Benedict 16 addresses the United Nations General Assembly in New York, April 18. Now brothers and sisters, when the Pope can address the United Nations, you better know the protest is over. Saints, it's just now a matter of time. It's just a matter of time. And we don't have a relationship with Jesus. We're not going to be able to stand through what's going to take place, saints. Germany reaffirmed Sunday law, December 1, 2009, from the trumpet. December 1, 2009 marks a historic day in Germany in more ways than one. By the way, Brother Davidson, I was in Germany during a meeting, and the very day that we left, all of Europe was protesting, for they wanted Sunday to be a day of rest. Members of the German Constitutional Court ruled on December 1st that Berlin must abide by the law instituting what? Sunday as a day of rest. Is it coming? Comrades supports the conference on the protection of their work through Sunday, Wednesday, 24 March, 1630, the European Parliament. Sunday as a day of rest. Here's one my conservative base is really going to like a constitutional amendment requiring folks to attend church on Sunday. That's Bush. That's a cartoon in America. Now, if the cartoonist would put in a cartoon like this in the paper, don't you know something's behind this, brothers and sisters? That's what it's saying. Here's one my conservative base is really going to lack, a constitutional amendment requiring folks to attend church on Sunday. Sunday, as a day of rest. Organ auto dealers want a Sunday's off law. Organ auto dealers want a Sunday's off law. Look what it says facing a steep economic downturn. Let me back it up so you can read. The vice president of the Oregon Automobile Dealer Association said his members voiced overwhelming support for the measure at a series of recent regional meetings. And then over here on the side, it says November sales were the weakest in nearly 40 years for almost a year. So in other words, they said, we got to get back to God. We need to close down on Sunday. Sunday is all for law. Sunday as a day of rest. Government to consider adding Sunday as a day of rest. In Israel? Wait a minute. I thought Israel believed in the seventh day Sabbath, Pastor. But Israel? 
wants to have Sunday as a day of rest. Government to consider adding Sunday as day of rest. Adding Sunday as day of rest. Friday, half day. 7th, 5th, that's, that's 2011, saints. Sunday, that's day of rest. Sunday shopping ban in Croatia. Sunday, as a day of rest. Brothers and sisters, do we believe this thing is going to happen? 2004 newspaper, Huntsville Times, that's 35 miles from where I live. Why isn't Sunday special anymore? Sunday, July 18, 2004. Sunday as a day of rest. Image to the beast. Look what the prophet says. As America, the land of religious liberty, shall unite with the papacy in forcing the conscience and compelling men to honor the false Sabbath. The people, listen to what it says, saints. What's going to happen? The people of every country on the globe will be led to follow her example. Our people, we need to read this loud and clear. Our people are not half awake to do all in their power with the facilities within their reach to extend the message of water. If nothing else, brothers and sisters, we need to leave here tonight. We need to be solid. Brothers and sisters, we need to get on our knees and pray, Lord, help me, for I cannot help myself. We at a point in time now, saints, where we have been slipping and sliding so long, we don't know how to straighten up. We've been walking crooked so long, we don't know how to walk straight. We've been thinking we got, we got all the time in the world. When the Sunday law passes, it's too late to get ready. Because the Sunday law is that voice at midnight that says, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go you out to meet him. That's what that is. You see, it's not a literal voice, it's a prophetic event. And when that Sunday law passes, that's the voice that wakes up the whole church. And now all of a sudden, everybody want to have a meeting. What did he say? Let's have a meeting. Give us of your character. And the wise tell the foolish. Not so. Lest we don't have enough for ourselves. Go and buy from him that sell it. Where is he selling? He's selling to the Laodicean church in Revelation 3. I counsel thee to buy me. Go, try it in the fire. White raiment that thou mayest be clothed. I say that thou may be seen. He's selling tonight. Do you want to buy? You don't need money to buy this. You just need to surrender. Amen. Are you with me, brother and sister? Will you surrender to God tonight? Who will you serve? Look at this thing, saints. Good, I got 15 minutes. I think my voice will last 15 more minutes. Look here. Beast. The image. My Lord says, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Are you with me, saying? The prophet says there's a glow around that fourth commandment. Let's quote it. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cow, nor thy stranger that is within thy gate. For in six days the Lord made the heavens and the earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rest the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. God says, remember, not to make it holy, but to keep it holy. And this is going to be the issue. This is the point that is going to be especially controverted. It is a repeat of the Garden of Eden, brothers and sisters. God says this and says, no, look what it says. 
So what do they say? What is the third commandment? The third commandment is a remember that I keep holding the Sabbath day. Which is the Sabbath day? Sarah's is the Sabbath day. Why do we observe Sunday, uh, uh, Sunday instead of Sabbath? We observe Sunday instead of Saturday because the Catholic Church transferred the solemnity from Sarah to Sunday. In other words, they said, we took, we sanctified it. We took God out and put it over here. I'm the Pope. I'm God on earth. I'm above the Bible. Who are you going to serve? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? You know, you look back, you think, well, eating of the fruit, that was such a simple thing. This is a simple thing, too. It has eternal consequences. Are you with me saying? It's about obedience. Who are you going to serve? No, you're not. To whom you yield yourself, servants you obey, your servants you are to whom you obey. Whether of sin unto death, or obedience unto righteousness, brothers. Who are you going to serve? You're going to serve God tonight. Look at this thing. What warrant have you for keeping the Sunday preferably to the ancient Sabbath which was said? We have for it the authority of the Catholic Church and apostolic contrition, tradition. Does the scripture anywhere command the Sunday to be kept for the Sabbath? The scripture commands us to do what? Hear the church and to hold fast the tradition of the apostles. But the scripture do not in particular mention the change of the Sabbath. Again, brothers and sisters, who will you serve? It's down in this, brothers and sisters. It's repeat of the Garden of Eden. It's that serpent. It's not the Pope. It's the devil. So when you choose to disobey God, you're choosing to obey the devil. There's no halfway matter in this. There's no gray error. You're either serving God or you're serving the devil. That's it, saints. The issue is very clear. There's no halfway matter in this much. And the Lord says, if you don't take a stand for me, he says, I, if I, I will deny you before my father, what Jesus says. I'm taking a stand for God. Are you hearing me, saints? I've told the Lord, I will not keep quiet. Let me tell you something, brothers and sisters. You will come under the are of the devil when you say, you will not keep quiet. I have a son right now that's dead in the grave. I remember when he got in trouble. I'm telling you, brother and sister, the devil came to me and spoke to me audibly and says, if you will shut up, I will leave you alone. And I'm going to tell you, the impression was so strong, I considered, man, maybe I need to just be quiet. But praise God, I'm standing here before you tonight. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Let me tell you something, saints. It wasn't an easy thing for my wife and I to sit there in that prison, talk to our son for four days, Monday through Thursday, and then sit in the, the chamber and see him be put to death. That wasn't an easy thing. But we saw it with our own eyes. And we says, my, 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 my wife says, son, I want you to give me a sign. You know what was a hus? A Jerome says, he told him, said, look, when they burn you at the, at the cross, he said, listen, he said, give me a sign that it's all right. He said, I'm going to raise my hand. When my son, when they're getting ready to kill him, he says, Jesus is Lord. Amen. Are you hearing me, brothers and sisters? Let me ask you a question tonight. Is Jesus your Lord? Are you hearing me tonight, brothers and sisters? Jesus says, why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Is Jesus your Lord tonight? Are you with me, brothers and sisters? Jesus is looking for somebody that's going to take a stand against this wicked demon called the devil. I'm standing, brothers and sisters. Are you with me? We are dealing with the devil himself. We wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and spiritual weakness in high places. And I'm telling you, saints, I hate the devil. I hate him. And the Lord has given me you the privilege to tear his kingdom.